Moving right along. So I have a number of electronics type projects that I need to get done. Uh, nothing that's uh, urgent or, or required, but just stuff for convenience. So here we go. And firstly, I'd like to have a inverter on board. Um, I do have this uh, sine wave inverter. Doesn't even need to be hardwired. Just plugs into a 12 volt outlet. Uh, only thing is, it's just 300 watts, which is which is not a whole lot for for powering higher uh, higher wattage things. Uh, so I'm going to opt to hardwire this uh, inverter, which is 1100 watts and 2200 watts peak power for when the uh, tool surges in the beginning. Um, and that's really what I'm going to use it for is uh, power tools and, and maybe my wife's hair dryer. <laughs> uh, this was uh, relatively inexpensive. Uh, I believe it was about $80 or so off Amazon. Um, and I know of two other people that are using them on boats without any issues. So uh, I think it's a pretty low risk. Uh, I mean, for that amount. Uh, came with the uh, wiring for the power. It's got its own fuse block. Negative. Uh, this is a phone cord, which I believe goes to this remote control, uh, which I probably won't use. And for mounting, of course, I'd like this to be in an area where uh, it's not going to get wet. So originally I was thinking in here, uh, maybe under here, um, if there was room. Uh, but I think a better choice would be uh, in here because ventilation for one. Um, not here, but rather here on the side of this, uh, this panel here. So I'm going to epoxy in some plywood and go from there. And now I've got that plywood epoxied in with a bunch of tape holding it in place. And while the epoxy on that plywood sets up, uh, I was able to run the wires, um, or, or the cables from the inverter to the panel. Uh, there was already a spot for an inverter, so I just needed to just connect it. Um, so uh, the one issue I've run into here is that uh, there's an on-off switch here in the back and you just leave that on. So you would think that just by hitting the power here that it would go on, but that's not the case because there is a soft switch here that needs to be turned on every time uh, in order for it to power up, which means that um, every time I want to use it, I'll have to crawl in there, reach up and hit this uh, switch to turn it on. Uh, in which case, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use that remote control after all um, and set something up. Okay, I've got it screwed into the plywood base. And similarly, I've uh, screwed that fuse block into a piece of small piece of plywood there attached to the bottom. And to make usage of the inverter a bit easier, I've taken an old extension cord, wired it into an electrical box with an outlet. Um, so this will just plug right into the inverter and I'll just plug in my uh, whatever I'm using the inverter for, for AC power. Uh, likewise, I took the remote control button, uh, put it in an electrical box. I just did a little cut out here in the cover and put it in there. So mind you, neither of these are uh, marine grade, which means uh, I may very well need to upgrade this at some point. Um, I don't think I need a GFCI outlet here. Um, I mean, this is, this entire thing is just one big extension cord. And now the final test. Got power. I'd say that works. Next. And because you can never have too many USB ports, I uh, bought a couple of these off Amazon. It has a little rubber cover. Uh, even the water.
wires are tinned. So I'm probably going to go for a spot over here. Um, I've already started running wire. This is the breaker for the 12 volt outlets. So I'm just going to run it down up along here. Along here, here's the wiring um, over here. And then down, this is the light, one of the lightning ground wires down and then come out here. Simple enough. So just ran the wires through there, down along the one of the lightning ground wires, drilled a hole, came into this little storage compartment and just drilled a hole behind here and mounted the, the USB port. Um, and I tested it and it works. And this seals up this rubber seal. Easy. Okay, so I need to do something about getting power to my bilge blower. So, in my, on my uh, transom here, I have this bilge blower. I actually came with the boat, I just remounted it. Put in that corrugated uh, four inch PVC hose. And it comes out to one of these deck plates where I just put this in. Um, so the issue here is the switch. Um, I had tried a couple different switches. I have this pretty cheap uh, illuminated switch, which is supposed to be waterproof, uh, but uh, kind of looks like a hack job because it's, it doesn't really fit well and it's not a real high quality switch. And also wiring it is just a matter of a couple of... Uh, See, just a couple of spade terminals here that tend to uh, come off all the time. So I do have this. I bought this uh, better quality, uh, supposed to be waterproof switch. Um, you can wire this a number of different ways. It's, it's, it lights up red. And I'm going to wire this so that whenever the power, there's power on the switch, it just stays illuminated whether the switch is on or not. Um, that'll give me... An indication, of course, if there's power and give me a little bit of light in the extra light in the cockpit at night. Looks like the hole here is too big. Fill that hole with epoxy. Drill the hole and sand it. Touched it up with a little bit of paint. And now I've got the switch itself installed there in the hole. Um, this was a little bit challenging because I needed to because this is so thick here, I actually needed to recess it to get the nut on there. Also, I've uh, connected all the wiring. I use those uh, low temperature solder tubes that melt. Um, and I chose to wire it so that when the power's on, it'll always be on red. Um, so, test it out. And now I've got the engine panel back on made up a little label and need to test it out power is on and i see the light from here so we have power and now it works next next i'd like to put some lights in the engine room or engine compartment as it were and I have a waterproof LED light bar, uh, well constructed. I believe the housing is aluminum. And originally I was planning to uh, kind of find a place in here towards the corner to get part of the front and the side uh, illuminated. But there's really no good place in there to mount that where stuff isn't in the way. Uh, so I'm thinking here, under here, um, these hoses and wires uh, will not be in the way because this uh, the LEDs are actually on an angle. And there is a flat surface under here uh, that I could just epoxy some wooden blocks to and then screw it into those. So to wire it, um, originally I had planned to utilize one of the light breakers and then have its own switch. Uh, but I think a better idea is to repurpose this water pressure 
um, breaker, which originally went to my electric faucet that's been replaced with the manual pump. Um, plus, I have this engine room lights illuminated label that I could just stick in there. And now I've got that secured in place, epoxied in that wood and uh, just screwed it in there. And here's the tails of the wires. Also, here's the wiring from the old galley pump. Uh, and it's nice and long, so I'll have a bunch of extra. A little more detail on these um, tubes that I use to uh, solder the ends of the wires together. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, there's a low temperature solder in this tube. The tube itself melts and these little red things are kind of a sealant to protect it uh, against water intrusion. However, I will say after using these for a number of years that not all brands are created equal. Um, some of them you can just use a heat gun and it will uh, be just the right amount of heat to melt the solder without melting the tube too much. Uh, however, some of them uh, you need to use a flame, like a lighter or a match, to get that to melt and no amount of heat gun will get it to work. So uh, that's the one I have here. Um, I've had to use a flame. And <clears throat> regardless, I always use a heat shrink sleeve over this. So I'll, I'll slide it over this and then melt it or, or heat it up like this one's already done uh, to ensure that that stays watertight. Okay, now that's all hooked up. And I'm testing it out. I've changed the label here. And there it is. Wow, that's pretty bright for daytime. It works. <laughs> 